Okay, so welcome to the Toastmasters meeting number 14 of Whitefield Toastmaster Club. Before we get started, uh, let me first decrease the volume of the phone or maybe keep the ring phone off. Hope you all are doing it. So few ground rules, uh, we do not speak about sex, religion, politics. Uh, you might have to exit, you can do it at the applause. If you want to enter, you can do it at the applause. Do not do while the, while the speech is going on, this might uh, distract the speakers. The third rule is, the third guidance is, uh, the exit is on your uh, right hand side on your left hand side there the right hand side there and uh, the washroom is on the ground floor on on the beside of the exit of the uh, building itself so uh, how many of you play holy in the last last year uh, on on march on march 14th how many have played holy there Okay, I think uh, I see only few hands there going on. This means that not many of the players, colors, but the theme of this meeting is colors. So you will get to know about more about the colors, which is actually the central theme of entire India. To, to take this uh, meeting uh, forward, before that, I wanted to talk about the mission. So like as everyone, Toastmasters has also his own goal. And it also divided by it also guided by the, some mission there. The club mission is we provide a supportive, positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. To take this meeting forward, I will call uh, presiding officer DTM Mazhair. Good. Hey, good morning, everybody. Okay, you did a better job with Arindam. Good morning, everybody. Uh, seems like a dislike for me and a like for Arindam much, is it? I tried to wear a same color as Arindam. I did not know our telepathy going to uh, meet. Uh, I already see Piyush wearing a blue, I see Kevin wearing a blue, I see Arindam wearing a blue and I'm wearing a blue and kind of shade of blue and uh, uh, some other people also wearing blue and I don't want to be captured for this. So there is this um, uh, you know, funny quote that goes around that men only know the primary colors as opposed to a woman knows a lot better color than that. I will talk about the theme in some time. First of all, good morning and I would like to welcome all of you to meeting number 14 of Whitefield Toastmaster. Can we welcome each one of us with a huge round of applause. And with this slogan gavel, I'm going to open the meeting officially. First thing first, I would like to, uh, because we do have uh, lovely new faces in our meeting today, I would like to request each one of our guests to kindly introduce themselves. They can introduce themselves by telling their name, where they're from, what do they do, and what is that one thing that they're planning to learn today at this session? Their name, where they're from, what do they do, and what is that one thing you're planning to learn? If possible, because I have the mic, I would rather prefer if they can come on the stage and do this. Is that okay? Yeah? So, uh, may I request Piyush first, if you can please come on the stage. You can use this in your hand if you want. Thank you guys. Good morning, everyone. My name is Piyush. I am from Marathalli. And, uh, okay, basically I am from Nagpur. I am born in Nagpur. I am in Bangalore for past four to five years. And today I have come here, not exactly learn anything, but just to have a very good Sunday and have a nice time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Piyush. Uh, next, I will request Nikita to please come over here and introduce yourself. Where you're from doesn't mean I'm from Belandur. <laughs> so Piyush was witty over there. Hi, everyone. 
good morning like you know my name is nikita so i am from ahmedabad but not a gujarati uh, i have been uh, working in bangalore for past 3 years i have been uh, working in uh, consulting industry uh, i have been attending uh, as a guest in toastmasters it is always a very pleasant uh, experience uh, today i have come here to meet new people new faces thank you thank you thank you If you'd have asked me way back in 2018, 2019, my answer would have been exactly as Nikita. I'm here to meet new people. Just before I introduce the new guest, I would like to definitely share a small story. So I started my Toastmaster journey at JPMC Bangalore Toastmasters when they came and they sent an email to all of us saying that you can join this forum. I saw opportunity there because they said one and half hour out of your operations. I said I'm the guy. <laughs> in my second meeting, I gave the same answer. But you know the real answer. All right, I would like to request our third guest, Sivan, if you can please cover the stage. Okay, so as he has introduced, my name is Sivan, and originally I'm from Prayagraj, UP. This is my second week in Bangalore. I have shift. I have stepped out of my home for the first time. For uh, I am working in TCS, and now they are are asking us to join office. So here I am. Uh, I have been a part of Lucknow Toastmasters Club earlier, and I joined Toastmasters in 2020. So I just I am here to learn more about Bangalore through trusted sources, and yes, uh, re restart my Toastmasters journey. Thank you. Thank you, and then we do have one or two guests, but they've been here before. So I once again welcome all of you. So can we have a round of applause for them? <laughs> Colors. The theme for today's meeting is really interesting. What can I say? I think uh, you know from the city where I'm from, we have a great influence of Mathura, and there's a different way how they play Holi out there. There's a Holi of uh, you know uh, using the petals of flower. Right, that happens. And then there's extreme holy that happens where they throw you in mud and what not possible. I've seen both of them. Haven't played either. The only one that I played and the best thing that we used to do in our society as kids, we used to go door to door and take colors with us and apply colors uh, to our friends and their family and parents and what not. And then there was this uh, small pond kind of thing where there used to be water. That water wasn't for us to throw each other, but to take water from there and use our uh, you know water guns, pichkaris, basically, and throw it in each other. And we also used to keep a lot of balloons in a bucket at our balconies on top. And whoever will see down will be just like throwing that. The same nostalgic memory came alive when recently uh, Raj and Archana invited uh, you know all the club members to come to Shobha Tree Makers to play Holi. There was rain dance, there was a flea market, there were colors, there were people dancing. On a working day. So I was like, how, from where do they get this energy? Raj was like, you know, let's go and have rain dance. And he did enjoy, you know, with Archana and other friends as well. Because I was not in a, a condition to take shower under the rain. Plus, I knew we we're going to go to Raj and Archana's house after that. I'm sure they won't allow us being wet to sit on their sofa. <laughs> so I refused at that time. However, at the same time, we had enough and we had a huge amount of fun, basically. On a working day, and we played Holi. That's a memory that I have recently. Holi also plays an important part, and as per my understanding, Holi is a festival beyond the colors. It's also a festival that reminds me and what I've been taught, you know, during childhood, and especially people who you are not in good term with. Let Holi be the celebration where you go to them, put color on their cheeks, and say, you know, let go of whatever has happened. And every year I look at Holi in that manner. Yes, there is fun. Yes, there are colors. Yes, there is what not possible. Yes, US has copied Holi and they do have color of festivals too. But with this meaning, I don't think so any other country does this. There were friends who I was not talking for a very long time. My school friends and my work friends and what not possible. All part and parcel of my life. I wait for Holi each year, especially when I'm in North India. I take out my time during the entire day, visit friends, especially who we've been not, I mean, people who've not been talking to me for some time. And I pay attention to them. I said, let this be the day where we forget whatever has happened and let there be holy, right? On that note, 
I would like to once again welcome all of you to Toastmaster meeting. As a presiding officer president of today's meeting, I do have a couple of announcements that I will do it towards the later part of the meeting. Now I would like to introduce somebody on the stage and for a Toastmaster meeting, especially for a guest who has not been a Toastmaster before. Uh, there is this master of ceremony who we call Toastmaster of the day who will take the entire meeting forward on her shoulder. And I am sure because the theme is really interesting, I would like to welcome this person who has been a charter member of Whitefield Toastmaster, currently working as an investment banker to a company, uh, a passionate hiker, a dog lover, called herself a dog mother too. And I am proud of myself for reading the introduction out of my mind over here, not looking at the phone. Without further ado, let's welcome with a huge round of applause our Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Trisha. Over to you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, distinguished Toastmaster Mazahir, for such a lovely introduction. A very good morning to all of you. Uh, I just want to have a small question before I start to speak. How many of you had a holiday on Holi? Please raise your hands. Four? Five? Five? Five out of, I think, 15 members. I think all five of you, you must continue working in the firm as long as possible. I'm, I'm not kidding. You know why? Because in most companies, the company's management had no clue whether the, was confused whether the holy was on Tuesday or Wednesday. And by the time they came to a conclusion, Wednesday was over. <laughs> holy is such a festival which makes us realize the significance of color in a celebration. Growing up in Tamil Nadu, I never had a chance to play Holi, uh, simply because it is not prevalent as much there. So if anyone is excited, like come let's play Holi, all that we had was Rangoli col colors, like go play with this. But in North India when I went, oh boy, it was the time when I realized the true spirit of diversity. Our people, our grown up kids went a little too crazy and they started showing love by applying colors on everything and everyone be it with, without any irrespective of their age, their gender, their religion and even animal kingdom. Poor dogs and cows and donkeys, everything was fed with colors. It was pretty much like like an avatar part 3, everyone in the same color, no differentiation between humans and dogs. But anyway, that aside, North India has a very special you know, element that it adds to a festival called Holi. So in different parts in North India, Holi is celebrated based on different stories. So, for example, in this place called Nandagaon, which is uh, which is a dist which is in um, Mathura district, the story which they follow to celebrate Holi is that they they basically celebrate Holi with two things. One is gulal, and the other one is this long stick. Why? Because Sri Krishna, the Lord Krishna, whose body is basically in blue color was so in love with Sita that he wanted to see how Sita looks if she was smeared with blue color. So that's the reason for the gulal. And the long stick is because right after Krishna smeared the powder on Sita, Sita got furious and she kicked out Lord Krishna using a long stick. So in this particular place, they use a stick and the gulal to celebrate Holi. And I'm sure, likewise, all of you coming from different parts of India would be having a story for Holi. Keep thinking about it. Now, I'm going to give you a brief about, I think, uh, did Masahir tell you guys about the structure of the meeting? Uh, yeah. So, for the benefits of the guest, um, so every Toastmasters meeting happens in three sections. Uh, one is the prepared speech. A uh, prepared speech is where a speaker chooses a topic, prepares a speech, comes delivers. Second is the table topic uh, session where you are given a topic 
uh, on the spot and you are expected to speak for about two minutes. And the final one is evaluation where uh, basically an evaluator will come and tell his point of view about the previous prepared speeches. So this is the overall overview about the meeting and uh, look forward to having a colorful discussion. Uh, so I would like to call upon the stage a general evaluator for today, TM Hira. So Hira is a very simple person who loves to take life as a journey. So she introduces as an ordinary person who loves to be in this journey called life. Welcome Hira. Hello everyone. Good morning. Hope you all are doing well. I will be the general evaluator for today's meeting. And as we are talking about Holi, this was maybe the first Holi I will I played aggressively. Because I'm from Kerala and we don't play Holi like in Tamil Nadu. And when I reached Bangalore, I mean, there are many sessions where uh, even the Toastmasters, we used to play. There was a meeting. After the meeting, we had like played badly that, and I was not aware that uh, we are going to play Holi. So I had been in my best dress and then I had to discard the dress. So this time, I was very unaware that uh, it would be like this. Because that time we had only applied gulal and it was very nice. Everybody was colored, but this time I had, I thought I will lose my life. <laughs> it was like that. In Shoba, it was a very mild holy uh, and I did not meet you guys there. Then I went to my friend's apartment to play holy the second round. And I, I don't know anybody there apart from my friend. But as soon as I reached there, they lifted me up and put me down <laughs> on the ground in some muddy water or I don't know what it was. Then I have this uh, thing where when water falls I suffocate and then people are like pull, uh, picking up buckets of water and pouring on my head. And then I, I kind of composed myself. After two, three buckets they stopped. Then I got up. That was my first experience being so wildly played. But it was fun. Uh, and I don't look forward to next Holi, uh, that is for sure. <laughs> so, but then when I was playing in Shoba, I realized that this time I was very underprepared. Because there were people with pichkaris and water balloons, which could be take as painful as rocks when it hits you. Uh, I thought maybe next time we should um, get these balloons and fill it with water and come. So any event happens. We evaluate it, thinking back, okay, this could have been done better. This is self-evaluation. Self-evaluation is good. But if we can get a point of view from outside, that is even better. You, an evaluator is somebody who is giving their opinion. So it is up to you if you want to take it or leave it. But what we feel, we will always come up in the end of the meeting and deliver. To evaluate a whole meeting is a very difficult task. So I have a task force with me who will help me to do the job. So I have the tag team. The timer for today is a, is a person who socializes selectively. So we are blessed with his presence here. Small things like games of badminton on weekends with friends and experiencing new dishes with his wife and playing indoor cricket with his three-year-old is something that delights him. So without much ado, let me uh, call upon Toastmaster Sijo, who will be the timer for today. Hey, hi, good morning. Good morning. So I'm just uh, reiterating what she told. I'm from Kerala, so I don't have much experience in playing holy, but whenever I see this, right, I mean, it used to be, I, I used to keep some distance from that because I'm not very used to that. So that's my experience with Holi, not much experience. So coming to my role today, uh, so I'll be the timer for today's meeting. Uh, so I'll be evaluating uh, the time for the prepared speeches. 
So prepared speeches. I think we have got two speeches today. Uh, so it will be like uh, uh, four minutes. I'm sorry, I didn't take the time. So at four minutes, you will be given a green card. And oh, sorry, it's five minutes. Sorry, it's five to seven minutes. Five to seven minutes speech. So five minutes it will be a green card, and uh, six minutes an yellow card, and at seven minutes a red card. And the red card will keep going till. Uh, the speaker will stop the speech. Coming to table topics, it will be uh, two minutes, and at one minute, it will be green card, and one and a half minutes, one minute 30 seconds, it will be an yellow card, and uh, at two minutes, it will be a red card, and again, the red card will keep uh, going till the speech is over. And the timings for evaluation it is uh, two to three minutes. At two minutes again a green card, and two minutes thirty seconds yellow card, and three minutes a red card, and the red card will keep going till the evaluation is getting over. And all the best to all the speakers and thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Timer, for explaining your role. So there is a 30 second grace period till you are disqualified for uh, the voting. You have voting rights. So with that, let me call upon this next person who finds immense joy in exploring the world around and connecting with natural beauty. I don't know if she considers this as, as natural beauty and uh, likes to connect with us. That I, I don't know. But let me call upon Toastmaster Archana. Good morning everyone. So I'll be playing the role of our counter today and the I mean the basic role of our counter is to note all the words and sounds which we make to uh, fill our thought process maybe because the words are not coming out of our mind or our mouth so that is where we use these words like ah, uh, um, or, or even like we, we start repeating words to fill to fill those gaps. For example, we uh, I can like round right now also I am fumbling and repeating something. So that is also can be an example. And sometimes we start repeating I I or that means that means. So I'll be keep I'll keep noting all these um, instances of occurrences for everyone and I'll present it as a report at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Now for grammarian's role, we have a banker by profession who is living in Bangalore for last four years. He loves gardening, traveling and exploring new places and cultures. So since he's a banker, I'm sure he has already no started noting plus and minus by now. <laughs> Let me welcome Toastmaster Piyush. Once again, good morning, dear Toastmasters and fellow guests. I am the grammarian for the day. As a grammarian, it's my responsibility to listen to all the speeches very closely and note down all the very good and not so good uses of language. I would be presenting my report of the good as well as not so good usages at the end whenever the general director calls me. The objective of this report would be for everyone to note down that what are the good uses that everyone makes that we can incorporate into our language as well as not so good uses to understand where we all are making those uses and to highlight those. It is also my duty to introduce the word of the day which I would request each and everyone to use and the word of the day today is vivid. Its meaning is producing powerful feeling or strong images in the mind. A best, a proper usage would be she created a vivid picture through her words and fascinated and entertained her audience as well as made us want to learn more about the mushrooms. And I would request each and every one of us to give the kind of appreciation by showing a thumbs up when anyone here uses the word vivid, which is the word of the day. Thank you and over to you, Postmaster uh, General Rangers. Thank you, Toastmaster Piyush. 
so that's my tag team they will be noting down the good usages and also what can be improved so what what's the motto here in toastmasters fall seven times but rise eight right so be ready for the meeting i am looking forward to this great meeting over to you toastmaster trishia and we will be back in the end with the evaluation thank you sir thank you toastmasters hira i think that put a very good uh, 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 relaxed feeling on the guests that it's okay to fumble upon words that's okay to mispronounce words but still we'll get up the eighth time thank you so much uh, with no further ado i'd like to uh, welcome our evaluator uh, for evaluator for the first speaker uh, toastmaster rishav so a very short and sweet introduction about him is that uh, he is an introvert throughout the week and he's an extrovert in toastmasters in the weekend <laughs> so welcome to show thank you toastmaster trisha today i would be evaluating our speaker kevin who is giving his speech level 3 project 1 and the topic the the embody what he wants to speak and improve is the effective body language what what would mean by the purpose of his speech is the mem is for the all the member is the for the speaker to deliver a speech with awareness of intentional and unintentional body language as well as to learn practice and refine how he uses non verbal communication when delivering a speech i looking i'm looking forward to hearing your speech all the best for it and we are waiting for uh, for you to paint a vivid picture in all our minds thank you thank you rishav uh so now i'd like to invite a special person um who remembers that he was smeared in magenta during college days while playing holi and he loves to observe the changes in every day and compares it with the colors he is always positive towards life and today he is going to deliver a speech for us i'd like to call upon toastmaster kevin to deliver please to deliver a speech and his topic is if this does not motivate you nothing else will if it if it does not motivates you nothing else will toastmasters kev so i'm going to tell a story about a, one of the biggest innovators in our our times or i would say the one of the biggest innovators in this world i'm going to divide the story into three parts the first one will be connecting the dots the second one would be love and loss and the third one will be death so this is the the whole idea of the speech is derived from a coronation ceremony in which this this individual had given a speech which is one of the most uh, viewed video i would say in youtube right now and this is how it goes to start off this person had a, he was a dropout in his college he studied in one of the ivy league colleges of us and uh, he had dropped out from his studies for various reasons he said he would like to connect this with his uh, from from before he was born the reason he says this is because his mother when he was born his mother wanted a girl child and uh, so they were going to give uh, this person for adoption and uh, there were two parents that turned up and they said we would love to adopt him but The, the his mother had had this condition i mean had this uh, i would say 
has this criteria in her mind that the parent should be a graduate. The reason why she says this is she is personally a graduate and she wants to make sure the child is also will also become a graduate or is sent to college. That is the expectation of them of his mother. Now, the situation goes in such a manner that um, the parents who who were willing to adopt this person uh, were not graduates, but they liked him so much, and they said, "We will definitely send him to college. No worries." And uh, she even did not sign the adoption papers in the beginning, but later she got convinced, and somehow she signed. And 17 years later, he goes to college, and that too an Ivy League college, and he drops out. That's what he does because he thinks his parents have earned. I mean, they have gone through a lot of hard work, and they earned so much money, and they were spending the money on his tuition fee, which he did not find very reasonable, because he is not. He felt like he is not achieving what he should from his life by studying in a college. So he drops out. and then he wanders and thinks what should i do now that's when he came across this class for calligraphy so it was done by some ordinary college there and uh, he started learning calligraphy like how to do some artwork and all that and uh, he felt it is very interesting and he learned that as well as the years passed by like after 10 years he started a big i would say he started in a very small way a computer company in from the godown or in the uh, in the uh, the place where he parks his car that's where they started the company and that company grew to be that big that it became a 2 billion dollar company with around 4000 people working under him he even uh, shared a perspective that during this years he even uh, i would say not before this not not during uh, while he started the company but before that you see even sell this the coca cola cans uh, he used to get 50 cents for that he used to, he used to sell that and even get uh, this uh, food from a temple an indian temple in us uh, so called hari krishna so he used to get free food from there so that was the kind of condition this person was in and now he became he started a 2 billion dollar company this is a great thing now comes the second part of the story it's about love and loss i'll start with the loss first because he got kicked out of his own company he hired a ceo and the ceo and himself both of them had a difference of opinion they felt i mean they were not it was not working out and he himself got kicked out because the board agreed with what the ceo has to say our ceo's view point is what the board felt is much more better than this person's he got kicked out again he is lost he does not know what to do now that is when he starts this company an animation company and that also turns out to be one of the biggest companies known right now and uh, after starting this company uh, he also found his uh, the love of his life his wife in between so during that year he started one more company and this company was bought by apple and he again comes back to the board of directors in apple and again he becomes part of the uh, the 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 computer giants uh, journey and uh, now comes the third part of the story which is death the reason why he said death is because he always reminds himself that it is not just the uh, the present world that we live in we should always he used to always look into the mirror and ask if i die tomorrow have i achieved what i need to achieve till now that was the question he used to always always ask by looking into the mirror and if he feels like for one week the answer is like no okay if i die tomorrow there is going to be i, I didn't achieve what i'm supposed to achieve that means he is not 
is not up to the mark. So he needs to do more, to achieve more. So this is a life, I, I assume uh, some of you might have realized because I said the word Apple in between. So this is the story of Steve Jobs. So when you think about it, I mean, we have a lot of uh, like um, very famous people in our society and everyone will have their own tales to say. But this is by far one of the hardest uh, stories that I've heard. But this person has overcome all the situations in his life and uh, become what he's become. With that, uh, over to you, TMOD. Thank you so much, Kevin, Toastmasters Kevin. That was indeed a very uh, clear, vivid speech. Uh, I like that you took the speech in your own pace and divided it into three parts and made it very clear for the audience to understand. Thank you so much. With that, I'd like to move on to the next speech. Before that, I'd like to call upon the evaluator for the next speech, uh, distinguished Toastmasters Mazahir. To be very short and sweet, he is a cheerful person. He always likes to laugh, he loves to speak. And uh, every time the meeting, he, he is the one behind it. He likes, he organizes it in a very meticulous way. And uh, over to you, Toastmasters Mazar. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Uh, my role as a speech evaluator for second speaker, the title for this project is Evaluation and Feedback. You will be hearing a speech and the purpose of this project for our speaker is to present a speech on any topic of his or her choice, receive feedback from the evaluator and apply the feedback to a second speech. Timer, please note this is level one project to speech one. The timing is five to seven minutes. All the best of the speaker. Back to you, Toastmasters. I'd now like to introduce our second speaker. He, is, he belongs to Meera in Uttar, Uttar Pradesh and he is an aerospace engineer by profession. He has been working in aero navigation domain for the last seven years. And his hobbies are badminton, volleyball, blogging, swimming, etc. So any of you here, if you, are, if you find the likes, you can participate and play with them. Right now, he is learning trading and developing the habit of reading every day. I think I, I can, you know, read with you. I'm also developing that habit. Yeah. So his topic for the day is the art of elimination. The art of elimination, Toastmasters Akshar. Hey brain, I need your help. I am in great trouble. You are always in trouble only. Tell me what happened now. Actually, there are so many things planned for this week and I feel like I won't be able to do all of them within the deadline. Won't be able to do all of them within the deadline? You only mentioned all those things as important and significant in my database for yourself. And now you are saying you won't be able to do. Go somewhere else with your ex excuses and you have to do everything within the deadline. Okay. I know I have only mentioned those things as important and significant for myself in your database but now it seems there is too much on the table and I won't be able to do all of them. If you know these things in the first place then why do you mention all those things in my database and confuse me? Now you have to do everything otherwise see what I do. See what I do? You are my brain or someone else's brain. Instead of helping me you are intimidating me and making my life even more painful. Okay, okay, do not blackmail. Um, now I will tell you the best productivity hack for 21st century. Let's discuss the art of elimination. Good morning to distinguished guests and my fellow Toastmasters. The topic of my speech today is the art of elimination. So we have, we do, 
we all have regular work uh, where we have to focus the most of our time apart from that we all want to part participate in so many activities but we do not have time right i also used to get swamped with office work with personal stuff with endless emails social media and stacks of books which i always wanted to read but there was time which was very limited and it is it is with everyone talking about the sports activities in which i want to indulge in maybe because of my inclination towards those sports activities or maybe i want to attain certain level of physical fitness so that was one part now if i talk about the new era time sucker which is known by the name of side hustle everyone these days wants to develop side hustle along with their regular work to earn some extra bucks but most of us forget that side hustle is something which require both your time and energy to develop and flourish you have to give at least if you are working from 10 to 5 you have to give 6 to 9 of your daily hours to that particular side hustle to develop and to flourish with time so i was going through the same thing and all of these things mentioned above um, whether it is my office work my personal work endless emails social media or maybe talking about the sports activities the books i books and magazines i always wanted to read all these things seems inevitable informational and unavoidable to skip so i was facing this problem and i used to literally feel overwhelmed and oversaturated by the feeling that no matter how much i try at the end of the day there was something pending on the table so i wanted to find the answer to this question and the burning question was how to get everything done within the time that was the burning question in my mind and so i started to look for the answers like any other individual i somewhere believe that you most of us most of you guys can also relate to this thing because it happens with everyone right and i started to look for the answers as i said and the only answer initially i was getting was to work hard stretch more grill more or maybe burn the midnight oil that's the only answer i was getting i started to do this thing but it was not helping me and you know the matter of fact is that the task and responsibilities are like waves in the rolling ocean means it it keeps on coming like a rolling waves one after another and you cannot get away from all those things so i started to learn uh, time management skills or maybe various productivity hacks but nothing was helping me no matter how much you uh, you know master those skills some something or the other thing will be left on the table so the question i was asking earlier that uh, uh, how to get everything done was the wrong question the right question was the right question anyone can guess the right kind of question was how to learn the art of elimination so you do not have to do the all the task in your list you have to select an some particular task which can make a bigger impact in your life you cannot do all the task in a in a stipulated time you have to select or you have to learn the skill to identify those task which can which can make a immense impact in your life and you have to de declutter your mind and that's the only way to have the vivid picture okay so at last i want to say that if you do not want to become the jack of all trades and master of none then you have to have learned the art of elimination thank you guys thank you akshay i think you are on the right track to learning how to trade well uh, in stock markets as you mentioned in your uh, intro the one who knows to choose the right stocks and stay invested will win and uh, it also uh, remembered about the pareto principle uh, it's always there in this investment banking and consultants job world so pareto is actually 80 20 so uh, 20% of the efforts yields yields 80% of the results so the art of elimination again you need to know how to pick and choose the 20% was a very thought provoking speech thank you so much uh i now like to uh, introduce our uh, toast master table topics master uh he is a he is serving as a vp membership in uh, our toast masters club 
he is working in the banking industry loves playing badminton i think you have a pair <laughs> and uh, he is also a passionate football player so with no further ado i'd like to call upon toast masters raj wow sunday morning full house colors 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 i see everywhere and to start with what print is colors on my shirt <laughs> a trip down side to goa it seems yeah. but when i when i open my eyes same so what dream it is <laughs> nudging on top and down <laughs> trying to navigate guests wonderful so for uh, since we had uh, you know holy couple of days back so i took the word colors and uh, it's it's going to be a very uh, easy session on table topics it might be difficult in understanding what i have written for that you can take a 5 second pause think and talk this is not your uh, you know appraisal sessions and all where you have to think and kya bolunga so many people what they will think just come here and talk <laughs> when i came here for the first time on the stage to speak about table topics i don't know what i spoke <laughs> fortunately that day there were only 5 to 6 people in the guest <laughs> today i can tell you <coughs> uh starting on the table topic uh, i will give you a chance so like you can volunteer yourself and come just 5 seconds guys if people start looking at the phone that will be the first person who will be called on the stage so please make sure that you have uh, you have your eye contact with me you you might not be called on the stage just uh, just keeping it light huh? don't worry so for uh, who would like to volunteer first okay yeah just about the life shirt but you wouldn't send it here okay anything you did okay go with the third one yeah oh your good name i sidat kim sidat Dear Sadar, so the table talk is: if you go back in time and tell your younger self one thing, what it would be. If you go back in time and tell your younger self one thing, what it would be. Sadar. Hi guys, Dear Sadar. my topic is if i can go back in time and tell myself one thing what would it be i'll make it very simple for you guys because that's definitely not going to be one thing there're going to be a lot more things uh, the first thing that struck me was um, i got into bcom honors in christ university when i was studying it was uh, india's uh, number one uh, university and bcom honors in every other course in christ university was like you know even if you get less than 60% you can join however all of them over there are 80 plus but their criteria was even if you get less than 60 you can join but for bcom honors course you have to get 60% at least to join and it was one of the hardest courses because normal bcom was done in 2 years and the honors the specialization was done in the next 2 years and i spent my whole 3 uh, years telling myself that oh it's already hard it's going to be hard it's going to be hard and then uh, maybe i didn't do that well and now i'm studying uh, chartered my chartered financial analyst and i know my cfa i, I know my bcom uh, portions i would have done it in like a, like a day so if, if i go back to my younger self nothing can change because i'm already here so <laughs> so if i go back to my younger self the first thing i would tell myself is it's okay breathe in maybe it's hard for you because you're telling yourself it's hard it's all in the perception so there are then however you can go back so maybe 2 years from today there might be something that you want to tell today so take that time back and tell yourself you know to go slow in life and uh, like Uh, the speaker previously mentioned you know eliminate certain things prioritize life and i was i was jumping when uh, kevin was talking about uh, steve jobs and apple and pixar because i knew i i saw i am one of the guys who increased the uh, 
made it one of the most watched YouTube videos because I watched it a couple of times and how you know life can connect dots backwards. Thank you guys. So I would leave you guys by saying if there's something you can tell yourself, tell it today. So maybe two years later, we can have that uh, transformational story listening to you. I'll be sitting there. Thank you. Wonderful. Good way to start, huh? How many of you feel motivated to come next? All right. Uh, cheers. So who would like to volunteer? Please. This is the last volunteer, by the way. <laughs> okay. Check the mic. I need the mic as well. Okay. Sorry, I forgot the process. Uh, Arindam, uh, Toastmaster Arindam, your topic is if you have the power to delete some color permanently from the world, which one it would be and why? If you had the power to delete some color permanently from the world, which one it would be and why? Toastmaster Arindam. Good afternoon. Good morning, is it? Uh, good morning, Toastmasters and dear guest. So, uh, my opinion is um, I don't see as any color which can be removed from there, but I just see that uh, from a behavior part, I want to remove the hatred in this world, which is actually of colors of different kind of behaviors which we see today. And why I believe that? Because uh, I, I have seen in the past uh, how in India it has played uh, these uh, these kind of hatred among each of us. And I think since we are talking about theme colors and that's what it's all, all about, right? I think uh, you do not see anyone, uh, uh, like if you hate someone, you not put a color because that's not the part of the entire holy is all, all about. If you do not like also, you want to play with them, jingle with them or, or whatever. So at least you can, the person can know you and then at least you also know them and, and at least you can forget the hatred part of that part. So that is what I, I think and, and this is interestingly which I always felt and you know, be it about race, be it about religion, be it about anything there, right? I think we should not be putting hatred just because of something X, Y, Z. That's, that's not the... Uh, something we should do it and I think uh, hence I believe that the color of hatred should be removed this entire world. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you. Color of hatred. How many of you agree with him? Wonderful. You know uh, freedom of speech in India <laughs> it acts two ways you know dangerous at times and uh, good at times as well but uh, yeah to me uh, I am a very colorful guy I mean I have already told that multiple times but yeah as you get to know me you know down this memory lane you will understand why I say so okay without further ado now volunteer yourself from the guest so who wants to go first? I can see Simran looking like this on the left. I can see people on the right looking at the left. So, okay. If you would live in a world where everything was one color, which color would you choose and why? If you would live in a world where everything was one color, 
which color would you choose and why similarly thank you table topic master uh, a color which i would would like to see everywhere as black because it hides all your flaws and your body curves that helps for me in a lot of times but black goes with everything it mixes up with everything it highlights everything you know when we used to draw something and paint it and just adding that black uh, lines to your painting to the drawings it just enhanced uh, every petal of the flower every leaf every uh, everything so yes black is my favorite color and i am just imagining how would everything would seem if it if it is in black um uh, so yeah that's my take on the topic thank you so much my better half uh, is in the crowd she would put it as white color of shanti color of peace me yeah i would i would go with black you know for three months back I was wearing black, and I had this chand. You know, like you see the chand, right? Now, now you see the chand is going in. So, yeah, black is one of my favorite color. And as she said uh, rightly, I agree with her. So, for who would like to go next? I'm bad with names, so yeah, I'm eating a lot of. Badams these days. So, okay. I remember few in the back whom I speak on daily basis. They are part of the committee. So, yeah. And I love you know. Uh, one thing I have learned in my life is learn to laugh on yourself. People will laugh with you. You will have a upper hand laughing on them at some point of time. So, okay. Your table topic. Uh, your name Piyush. What is your least favorite color? and why you dislike it what is your least favorite color and why you dislike it piyush oh, okay so it's a li little tricky but yeah i try to give some my thoughts so my least favorite color is black i can consider uh because why black because uh, i think uh, black is something uh, like a symbol of a sorrow uh where and i feel the like the world is full of a love instead of a sorrow uh i feel uh, to go with a love a red color uh, rather than a black color because i feel in uh, in the world people need love people need sympathy people need uh, to care each other so that's the reason uh, i choose to go with a red instead of a black and uh, yeah that's the only message like uh, love to love loving each other and uh, spread the togetherness instead of uh, spreading hatred and uh, sorrow so that's all about my table topic today how are you guys good all right who want to volunteer next the first person i the first person i saw when i said who want to volunteer next is nahush who looked at me and said nahush on the stage please come on guys i assure you everybody on the stage okay. i will read it for you toast master nahush uh, your topic is what color best represents your emotional state and why what color best represents your emotional state and why if i can add one word in that for your comfort 
what color best represents your emotional state right now and why so good afternoon everyone uh, so what color represents my state right now is blank i don't know what to talk about right now. yeah so i'm clueless actually i you, you're going to uh, hear me stutter a lot fumble a lot not be able to organize my thoughts and present any ideas currently because i don't know colors is something that you know always confuse me perplex me like the stereotype that you guys which raj himself mentioned at the start or i don't know someone else that men cannot recognize any other colors apart from the primary colors that applies to me very well i am like the living personification of that stereotype so uh, i don't know like what are these other colors cyan beige i look at uh, my mom's dress to say oh that's peach not like no beige and then i see someone wearing a blue dress i say oh that must be blue no it's cyan like purple no maroon what is this so that is pretty much my state right now and as you can see i'm pretty much going off topic uh, and yeah so i uh, if i have to say in like in general i'll try my best now to like get some color that represents my emotional state in general uh yeah <laughs> still blank uh, uh wait 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 let me try let me try i'm waiting for the timer to show colors <laughs> oh it's yellow hey okay, guys yellow represents my state i like to end it Wow, wonderful! <laughs> that was a good, uh, you know, that punchline I like. Waiting for the timer. The, the timer was occupied somewhere else, but so. If you ask me, what is the color of my emotional state right now? Those Android phones which you see right now, right? One Plus, M I, and all, where you have those multi-color screen savers going on. That is what it is right now. Because boss, I am a time table top with master guys. I will call you. I am not going to sit and look around here and there. So you know, uh, yeah. And this is fun, guys. This is fun. It's better to be here and lead rather than sit there and think. Ab bolayega mujhe. Now he's going to call me. So Mazahir, uh, you can put me as a volunteer for this role in the next two weeks. So, yeah. Wonderful. So who who goes next? Come on, guys. I have never raised my hand myself. They always call out my name. Do something. All right. Somebody from you to on the guest side. मुझे क्यों बुला लिया? Why did he call out me? Okay, Krishna, please. Toastmaster Krishna. By the way, if, uh, I'm just giving you another three, three to four minutes to prepare next. So, दिखा दो थोड़ा सा कौन सा टॉपिक? I just, I wish I could share what he just said. He's a very good friend of mine, by the way. You all are. What is your favorite color, and why does it inspire you? What is your favorite color, and why does it inspire you? Toastmaster Krishna. Thanks, sir. Toastmaster Raj. Good morning, everyone. So, um, all colors, you know, whatever I see uh, when I wake up, everything I looks, you know, whatever in front of me uh, now, red, pink, yellow. uh all three uh, cards everything looks good to me uh, but it depends on mood when i wake up i want to see the greenery so at morning for me green is pretty uh, good color which gives the relaxation to the mind next uh, red when i am kind of you know in fighting zones or going for the you know uh, badminton things that time i want to see i want to watch red color <coughs> when i am kind of uh, Uh, sadguru speech or somebody you know a gyan speech that time i want to be in peace and that time white is my uh, good color uh, but 
if i would say in kind of common blank is you know as you suggested i am currently blank that what could be a best color but red i feel on top of green and white because this give me a immense uh, you know a powerfulness to do whatever i am doing currently thanks guys thank you for your question green mazahir rishab they have been to my house when you go to my balcony thanks to my wife it's all green i have seen i have, I have not visited it but i have tried to see from outside how it looks uh, you are married yeah you once you are married if your partner is nature lover she paint the whole house green not with colors but with plants and all different shades yeah and when he said white i can relate that my better half is also too much into meditation and now i am also spiritually involved i i follow sadguru for the last 3 4 years last uh, shivratri i got the opportunity to meet him not meet him as in like this yeah i was among one of the 5 lakh uh, you know people in the crowd yeah but i saw him from close distance so i am very spiritually moved and uh, i follow sadguru and you know whatever he does so there are a couple of uh, lines which he uh, narrates you know without listening to those lines i don't sleep nowadays so it's that powerful all right uh enough of my thing so who goes next yes, ma'am uh trish sorry yeah i just have two so it's 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 actually going fun we'll do it fast so please uh, yeah not you ma'am so you can choose between you guys who wants to go so you have to come with us all right come on we don't have a short of time all right come on all right come on guys motivational class come on always remember it starts from us only so, your good name yogendra you people call me yogi but the name is very i hope yeah yeah yogi i see lot of yogi nowadays what color best represent your personality and why yogendra what color best represent your personality and why okay uh, the color which best represent me my personality would be uh green i would say or blue because um, i like nature a lot like uh, uh, if you come to my flat you will see uh, walls and floors uh, been filled with green colors green mats and also i like visiting uh, places uh, which is very close to nature which is like uh, like have a lot of greenery uh, in the surroundings and um, yeah that's it one of the i don't have time so i just go back to the last one uh toast master mazahir uh, So, Master Mazahir, uh, how uh, did you view colors as a child and now? So, Master Mazahir, how did you view colors as a child and now? This is the last one. I have nieces and nephews at home in Delhi, and I see my sister-in-law uh, trying to teach, and these are toddlers right now, trying to teach them colors. this is green that is blue that is yellow that is maroon and white and black and what not possible i remember my childhood days i don't think so i paid so much of attention to it reason because fairly easy i was not into art unless class 8 i remember in class 7th i informed my painting teacher i said if this subject is not going to be there after class 10th why are we reading it 
he looked at me with the same face and he requested my father to come next day. <laughs> he turned up and he asked what seems to be an issue and he said this guy pays no interest in colors anymore. But as I grew up, fast forward to today's uh, time, not today's date, but today's time, uh, especially in last, uh, oh by the way, okay, this is important. So between 2006 till 2011 or so, I was horrible with color matching. Okay, horrible like the horrible the most. Like I would wear dark with dark. <laughs> and I would wear like light with light. It's up until you grow to a stage where you understand, oh, what color goes well with what. Like what kind of a shirt should you be wearing with what kind of a t-shirt and a jeans? What kind of a shoe should you be wearing? And I got really specific, especially when I had an opportunity to work with JP Morgan, where the policy was that from Monday to Thursday, you'll actually uh, have to wear um, formals. So I will make sure my watch strap color wears and matches my belt color and my belt color matches my shoe. And if I was rich, my shoe should match the color of my car. <laughs> right? So I'm very specific about colors nowadays. I mean, each color that I wear and keep experimenting. I believe later point of time, uh, because of friends that I've interacted with, the people that I've interacted with, they told me the values of colors, right? In their own views. I think now I'm somebody who is... Um, completely, uh, you know, in favor of any color possible. I don't really differentiate as a color of a particular gender or not. I think as in what life teaches you that you have to be ready for any opportunity, any thought that comes into your mind or your way and accept it the way it is. I'm sure it will only help you grow. Thank you. Over to you. Table top of this. The reason I called Mazahir because, yeah, I was seeing a child inside him for a long time. Okay, uh, I would just like to uh, continue with one line from him, you know, uh, dressing uh, formals and all in my early days, child, not exactly child, after college days, you know, I used to wear black, black shirt, black trouser, black belt, black watch, black coat. I was such a moron at that point of time, I did not understand that with black, you need to wear brown combination in terms of belts and your shoes, man. And you should not have those funky, flashy pink socks, which I used to wear. I don't wear any reason now. So I hope you had a good time and uh, I would hand it back to uh, Toastmaster Trisha. Thank you so much, Toastmasters Raj. It was indeed a wonderful session. Very colorful to know what perspectives people have about colors. Thank you so much for uh, making it aligned with the team today. It was really good. And uh, a big, up, big round of applause to all the participants, whoever came here spoke. Very nice to know about your own story, how you, how you, you know, the way you actually connected it with your life was truly uh, appreciable. Uh, I'd like to call upon our general evaluator now to provide an evaluation of uh, the tact, uh, the tact, the evaluation of the tact, Toastmasters entire meeting, as well as the TAC team to give their reports. Toastmasters team. I'm back. <laughs> uh, before I start my evaluation, let me call the speech evaluators for today. For Toastmaster Kevin's speech, we have Toastmaster Rishabh. Please present your evaluation. Did you know that out of 219 startup unicorns, only one person has, is a college dropout? Huge congratulations to Toastmaster Kevin for completing his level 3 project 1 speech which, start, which had the topic, if it doesn't inspire you, nothing else will. What a strong topic it is. I would like to point out what, he, what are the positive points that he went through in this speech. The first was, he was very clear and his speech had a lot of clarity when he said in his starting few statements that he would divide his speech into three statements, into three parts. The first would be connecting the dots, then love and loss, then death. 
it portrayed it portrayed a great image into the audience so, such that we were waiting for part 2 and then part 3 to come next when we speak about voice there are three things that we need to consider the tone the speed and the volume tone and speed were really great you were at your confidence level and you were pacing it at the at your own pace and the speaker was trying to connect the story also so it was a great improvement i would i would say and lastly i would like to congratulate you by having that comfort level because when you utter something in a speech which you don't want to utter you lose your confidence but he himself admitted it that yes he misspelled apple and then also he improved on his speech and then he continued with it so that's a great speech but out of all the positives i would like to highlight something which you would you, which you can improve in your coming speeches the first one would be it it would be really great if you do not move randomly like here and you are very concise where do you want to move like if i'm putting a point one here i'll address the audience point two i'll address another point here then i would also like to uh, portray that while you were connecting while you were thinking about the next line in your speech what what really happens when we do not understand or what we when we try to remember what we have prepared for ourselves then we usually look down or look up try to avoid that and that would really help you connect with the audience and when you are taking a pause let that pause be something that the audience feels that it is a deliberate pause think about it that way that's that's where i would like to summarize that you were really great in your speech the story that you had painted it i i would never even understand that it was steve jobs story i would have i was thinking that it was a friend of yours that was there until you said the word apple but it was really a motivational speech yes if this does not inspire us what else will thank you Thank you, Toastmaster Rishabh. Let me call upon Toastmaster Madhya for the second evaluation of Toastmaster Rishabh. Good afternoon, everybody. And my special good afternoon to Toastmaster Akshay. Thank you so much for delivering a wonderful speech. And can we have a huge round of applause for him successfully <laughs> completing level one project two speech two. To talk about your speech, I'm going to put it in a very simple manner. I'm going to tell you where you did uh, really well, where you might need to improve. And overall, you know, if there's anything that you would like to challenge. What I absolutely love about your speech was the intent of your speech. Every speaker, my dear friends, whenever they happen to deliver a speech, always try to understand the intents are the purity of a speech. And thank you for very well delivering that. You inform people that how well to utilize one's time. Right? That was the entire intent where you weaved your story. The content was really good. As a speaker who's delivering his second speech, the connectors, my God, I, I can never think about, imagine uh, me being yourself, you know, when I started with my journey. Your content was rich. That painted the vivid imagery in everybody's mind over here. The delivery style, your speaking style was basically to inform. And in this style, it can be done in a very simple manner and you did it really well done in a, in a meaningful manner. You also have a really good voice modulation along with the voice clarity that you got. And you had a smart, and you probably know as a speaker the, the usage of stage because you move around a lot. If I may recommend you a couple of points as an area of improvement uh, to see you grow better in your public speaking journey or communication journey. Number one, when you happen to deliver a speech to inform, if you could probably add a couple of data pointers here and there. Now what it does to a speech, it gives the credibility. Example with the census of 2011, our country's population was that much. That gives the sense of credibility to it, the data that I'm putting in through, right? Uh, this is one request that I have. Smaller point, especially related to a character play, if you move around on the stage to do one character, you lose about three seconds or two seconds or so. If you really have to, 
maybe just turn one step and do so. It's enough for you to say there is one character on the other side. Another thing is um, when you face exactly like this and if I'm saying something like that, I think with my voice, I don't think so I'm as audible as I'm right now if I'm facing towards the crowd. So maybe slightly tilt yourself if possible. This is on that. Another thing important is again, smaller point, crowd work. You will notice a lot of stand-up comedians if you don't laugh, they'll pause more so that you can laugh. The moment you ask a question to your crowd and if they don't respond for some reason, hold on for another two seconds. If somebody is nodding, you know they are nodding at least. Fair enough, you move on from there. Overall, these are the points and the, uh, what I absolutely love the way how you narrate story. You are a, you are a born storyteller, I believe. And uh, I absolutely love the way how you delivered a message that if you don't want to be the jack of all trade, learn the art of elimination. Whatever, you know, whether the task is unnecessary or less important, whenever you feel that, eliminate it. That was the entire message of it. I heard your speech and I was totally inspired. I think I'm definitely going to eliminate a lot of things from my life and it's totally inspiring. I would love to hear more and more speeches from you. Congratulations and back to you, Toastmaster Hira. Thank you, DK Mazahir. With that, let me call upon my tag team for the evaluation of each specific criteria. Timer, Toastmaster Sijo, please come and deliver your evaluation. We had a very <clears throat> wonderful, we're having a lot of good speeches and special congrats to Raj for having that very nice table topic session. And um, with respect to time, I think we are all good. Uh, just a couple of things, maybe uh, two speakers in table topics, uh, uh, Simran and Yogi, maybe you can uh, try to speak uh, more than one minute. Except that, I think all were within time. So there's nothing uh, to be pointed out. Uh, over to you, Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Sriju. Now we will call upon our counter Toastmaster Ashkana to give her report. Thank you, Toastmaster Yeah, so overall, as a club, I think we did well. We did not have so many ah, uh, um, ahs, and repetition of the words. So I'll start from Toastmaster Arindam. So he had several ah, uh, I think that uh, for the further meetings he can avoid. And there was repetition of on the word. And coming to Toastmaster Trisha, there was several times ah, uh, which can be avoided. Uh, Toastmaster Hira had uh, like three times of ah, uh, and Kevin had four times ah, uh, and the repetition of the the word. Other than that, Akshay had uh, just one time the repetition of and word and Piyush had uh, three times of a, uh. Krishna had several times of a uh. and Piyush, sorry, Piyush, for Piyush I missed one thing. So there was repetition of and ya. Uh, yeah. That's it. Thank you. Thank you to Master Archana. Now let's call upon our banker friend for Grimalian's report. Thank you, Toastmaster Hira. And uh, once again, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Only really to highlight few fantastic uses of uh, lang English language as seen today, especially by Toastmaster Trisha, who used phrases like uh, mirrored in magenta and gave an example of Perito principle, which was very fantastic use. Uh, then we saw speaker Kevin use few good phrases, even though from the speech that is connecting the dots and love and losses. Love and loss, sorry. Moving on to next, we saw good usage by speaker Akshay as well, where he used the kind of phrase of new era time sucker. And he also used few good uses, right? Overwhelmed, burning the midnight oil. Moving on to a table topic session, a uh, few of the speakers could, few good words like transformational story, colors of different behaviors and colors of hatred. 
we saw also kind of poetic user it uh, symbol of sorrows and uh, love loving each other uh, moving on to the word of the day we saw lot many speakers use the word of the day especially multiple times by uh, toastmaster mazhar and also by toastmaster trisha and uh, speaker akshay i might have missed a few apologies for that speaking on to certain uses which we should avoid or uh, for few of the speaker used the uh, word condition instead of uh, criteria and uh, used the uh, misplaced use of sending him to college ideally it should be admitting him to college in addition that we uh, one of the table of speaker used word going out of topic it should rather be running out of words and uh, that's all from me thank you and over to you premierian oh sorry general evaluator thank you i'm going to be brutal because mazar told he wanted a fresh set of eyes so in the agenda the sa was toastmaster kaushika so till toastmaster arindam uh, came up for table topics speech i thought his name was toastmaster kaushika <laughs> <laughs> because there was no self introduction sa is the first person to speak on stage and unfortunately nobody introduces you so you have to take up that role of introducing yourself and also that you are the sergeant at arms because there might be guests here who don't know what who is this person next time maybe the guest will open the meeting we don't know right so uh, i expect the sa to at least give their own introduction and introduction of the i mean name the role what they are playing and uh, i know that you might be the last minute essay but then i expect all the members of the toastmaster community to learn the three rules of toastmasters meeting which they can tell without looking at their phones we are so used to online meetings that we can read everything but the script for sa is a mandatory thing that you should not read you should be ready with the script and any time you are asked to be the sa you should come up and say that because every meeting starts with sa but uh, the thing is that uh, i like the one point what he uh, i mean you said the context of the meeting and also when the energy was low you uh, you called out for another good morning to wake everybody up so that's a good point uh, that's exactly the role of sa and also i like the fact that he stated that exit is towards the left and then there is restrooms downstairs for any person who is new to the building time and tide waits for none but then we waited for many role takers today i think for more than 5 minutes so i think uh, we should rewrite that uh, rule or be on time from next time because you know you are the role takers and you have to be present here before the meeting because there are guests coming here and it should set a good example to the guests that toastmasters meeting run on time i said lot of because because so but yeah and then in the agenda there was uh, secretary something something i was looking forward to this new segment but uh, it did not happen didi uh, mazavir was uh, as always exceptional on stage only the criteria is that he should have minded the time uh, when we started late he should have in- cut short his intros or cut short his uh, time of speaking uh, i'm you all did well but now in the interest of time i'm going to note down uh, talk about negative points huh? okay then moving on to toastmaster of the day toastmaster trishya uh, very composed but cheerful presence on stage a uh, loud your way you tell a story you are a true storyteller uh, the only thing is that in between you asked if toastmaster i mean uh, dtm mazahir already you already said the structure of the meeting because you were late so you did not know <laughs> what did he tell it or not um, yeah 
then timer uh, toastmaster sejo uh, when you are introducing you should uh, you should know that who are giving the speeches and what kind of speeches are being delivered so only the ice breaker has 4 to 6 minutes rest of the speeches are either 5 to 7 or longer or maybe shorter also depending on the criteria of the speech so please uh, be ready for your role but you presented a very crisp report uh, as requested i mean as apt for a timer because we are in short of time a counter toastmaster archana mm, you introduced your role very well and also you had a very detailed report uh, i i especially admire these role takers tag team because they have to be present sometimes we are so involved in what others are speaking we don't know how when to start the time and when to off all those things so appreciate all of your uh, keenness and observational skills grammarian uh, toastmaster piyush uh, you are a very good word of the day vivid is a very easy word to use in a conversation and also a uh, very beautiful etc uh, etc et can be replaced with vivid there are a lot of uh, words that can be moved uh, removed and used with vivid vivid is a very vivid word okay. uh, so uh, very well chosen word of the day and your report was very crisp and detailed and uh, you are a very good listener i would say and uh, i would like to cut short the speaker and the evaluator later uh, the uh, evaluations later in yeah now table topics master toast master raj you have a very engaging uh, humor sense everybody who was listen, who were listening to your uh, topics i felt the topics i felt like i was opening facebook there were a lot of quizzes on personality and uh, how do you relate your personality with color how what is the color that uh, suits you but it was it was thought provoking at the same time because uh, when you come here and think about it yeah like uh, nahush said uh, nahush right? sorry i don't uh, yeah that uh, there is a spec like it is uh, this color blindness is not only stereotypical for the guys i also fall into that criteria most of <laughs> the colors i don't know uh, you know blue and blue. Uh, this is uh, very uh, nice and uh, yeah so i loved all your topics and you were very engaging here but i wanted to uh, okay i will take this off like but it is <laughs> it was <laughs> our a uh, good session and the only uh, point of improvement for you is that when you come here and as a table topic master uh, you have it would be good if you can uh, re iterate the point that you can speak from 1 to 2 minutes so that people know that you have to at least speak for 1 minute to qualify okay with that uh, i will conclude my evaluation over to you toast master tushia thank you those masters hina for rightly pointing out uh, for the betterment of all the team members all the club members uh, so i'd like to uh, point out a couple of things uh, which happened before the meeting which i found was very uh, neatly done for this meeting by the organizing committee uh, so the agenda was out two days back appreciable the word of the day was out two days back again it allowed the team members to actually see and then come prepared wonderful job by the organizing team um, and kudos to you all i think we should all give a round of applause to the organizer as we all just finished holi we all welcomed spring right so the importance of holi is to pull you out of the mundane thoughts the monotonous thoughts and expose you actually push you to waking up to colors every day isn't the nature already helping us by showing different colors to wake it wake up to it i have a very humble request for all of you from now on throughout this 3 months till the spring ends whenever you get to see notice colors take a moment pause observe it appreciate the beauty and move on thank you so much i hope all our lives will be filled with love life hope and joy over to you presiding officer thank you thank you so much let me see if i can wrap it up in 2 minutes um, 
first thing first i'll be closing the meeting number 14 you guys have the ballots please fill for the best role player among the table topic master toast master of the day and general evaluator general evaluator is hira table topic master is raj and toast master of the day is toast master trishya we will also be voting for the best auxiliary role player supporting role player among the sergeant at arm toast master arindam timer as toast master sijo arjuna as toast master as as our counter and piyush as grammarian for today uh, in the interest of um, you know guest being here though because of time they weren't really qualified for voting however because they are coming here for the very first time or after long time we are qualifying everybody for the vote please vote for the best table topic speaker you can see the names right here and we'll be collecting your ballots also you can write your feedback for speaker 1 and speaker 2 this is highly confidential we'll request you not to write your name that will definitely encourage the speaker to do better for their next speeches recently we had a club contest and for our club contest international speech contest was won by toastmaster veshak he moved on to area contest and he won over there he will be representing our club and our area at the division on april 22 uh your stuli also won during the speech evaluation contest i went to the area i also won at the area will be representing our club thank you uh, will be there <laughs> thank you that's a paid audience thank you <laughs> um i'll be representing our club at the and our area at division on april 22nd i will request each club member and guest to come forward it's a saturday we will definitely go there to cheer our club member So Toastmaster Vishal can all be there. Second thing, votes will be collected by Toastmaster Raj and Arindam. Please leave them on your chair. We will discuss and we will announce the results later, part of the meeting. Another important announcement is about the snacks. The snacks are on club. We will be gathering after the meeting to the nearest point at Tandoor Chai to have some good snacks and some good chai. Apart from that, we will be also uh, going today in the evening to Indra Nagar, Bangalore International Centre. because a friend of ours toast master savin who also happened to be one of the finalists at world championship of public speaking um, you know in past is along with his crew and it's called indian improved tribe iit are performing today uh, around 6 o'clock so people who are interested uh, please talk to us and we will guide you through on that note let me go ahead and with a huge round of applause can we finish our meeting number 14 today